In this American English pronunciation video, I'm going to make a steaming bowl of ramen noodles. Of course, we'll also study pronunciation and we'll see a lot of reduction in action, like gotta, gonna, them, and can. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a blast. This video is actually not entirely about American English pronunciation. It's by request from my mother. Because when I was with her over Christmas, I was telling her how much I love to make ramen noodles. And she thought that was sort of gross. Did you notice? I made a flap T out of the T in sort of. This is because it comes after an R before a vowel sound. Sort of. We'll want to link the D to the next word, which begins with a vowel, sort of, sort of, so it sounds more like one word than two separate units. Sort of. Let's listen again. Sort of gross, sort of gross, sort of gross. Ramen noodles. And she thought that was sort of gross. I assured her it's not gross, not the way I make it. So this video is for her, how I make my ramen noodles. Now, I was also on vacation with my aunt. A-U-N-T. I know that aunt is not the number one pronunciation for that word. Most people pronounce it aunt. I use aunt. So let's look. Mom, aunt, ramen. They all have that ah vowel but each one of those words spells the ah vowel differently. Okay, let's get cooking. First, I take the bowl that I'm going to eat my ramen soup in, fill it up, it's gotta be kind of big. Do you remember in the Thanksgiving video when we reduced I have got to to I've gotta or I gotta? It's happening here. It has got to. I'm reducing it to it's gotta. It's gotta. Listen again. It's gotta be kind of big. It's gotta be kind of big. It's gotta be kind of big. Maybe leave about an inch at the top. I'm gonna put it on high. Did you notice I'm gonna? I've reduced I am going to to I'm gonna. Of course, use of gonna is very prevalent in everyday spoken American English. I'm gonna. The first syllable has the G consonant, a uh, as in butter vowel, a nice clean N, and the second syllable, the schwa. The first syllable is stressed, gun, and the second syllable, unstressed, uh. Gonna. Gonna. Listen again. I'm gonna put it on high. I'm gonna put it on high. I'm gonna put it on high. Oops. Wrong burner. You'd think I would know by now. Okay, so while that's heating up, let's talk about the vegetable situation. Come over here, camera lady. So I'm going to use mushrooms. I have some frozen green beans and carrots. Um, I love to use bok choy, but I don't have any. I'm gonna garnish with a little cilantro. And you know what? I'm remembering that in my freezer, I have some chopped up onions that I already fried one time when I made an absolutely ridiculous amount of fried onions. So I'm actually gonna chip off a little bit of that to throw in as well. Okay, so I'm gonna chop up my mushrooms. I'm gonna try to be careful not to lose any finger parts in the process. I'm not exactly gifted in the kitchen. I have lost finger parts in the past. Don't make them too small. Did you notice I reduced the word them to the schwa M sound? Um, mm, um. Mm. Because in this pronunciation, the word them begins with a vowel, and the word before, make, 
ends with a K, I'm going to make sure that those two words link and feel like one unit. Make them, make them, rather than two separate words. Listen again. Don't make them too small. Don't make them too small. Don't make them too small because we are going to be eating this with chopsticks. It's going to be a grabbable size. Okay, I'm also going to put in a carrot. Carrots, I like to cut them on the diagonal because, again, it makes them bigger. Did you notice two more cases where the word them was reduced to um? I like to cut them on the diagonal. Cut them, cut them. We're taking the final letter of the word cut. We're attaching it to the word um, um. And because the T now comes between two vowels, I turned that T into a flap or a light D sound. Cut them, cut them. Also the phrase, it makes them bigger. Makes them bigger. Again, them reduced to um, um. Also, did you notice I reduced the word because to simply cause, cause. The K, schwa, Z sound. Cause it makes them. Cause it makes them. And, as usual, when you reduce something, you link it to the words that come around it. Cause it, cause it, cause it makes them. The Z sound links to the next word, it. Listen to the phrases again. I like to cut them on the diagonal because again, it makes them bigger, easier to grab with a chopstick. Okay, so then I'm gonna use the frozen green beans from Trader Joe's and my frozen onion, <clears throat> which actually when I made it, I had fried in grease from ground beef. <laughs> What? She just gave me, camera lady just gave me a face that was like, that's gross. And you know what? It's not gross. It just, it makes it more tasty. Okay. I'm guessing that the water is boiling. So I'm now ready to head over to the pot. Just a quick note. Did you see how much the jaw dropped in the word pot? And you can see a dark space in the mouth because the tongue is pressed down in the back, just the way the ah vowel should be. It's not boiling. I need to be patient. So to make my broth, I'm not just going to use the packet that came with the ramen, of course. I will use some of it, but I'm going to supplement. Hey, another gunna. I'm going to supplement. I'm going to supplement. But I'm going to supplement with fish sauce, soy sauce, sugar, some fresh lemon, and probably a little fresh pepper as well. Okay. It's boiling. In goes the ramen. I give it just a few seconds to start to break up. Even though these are frozen, it's okay to throw them right in. Did you notice how quickly I said the word it's? I reduced it by dropping the vowel altogether and detaching the T-S sound to the next word. It's okay. It's okay. This was very fast of me. Quite casual. It's okay to throw them right in. And now all the vegetable that we've chopped goes in. Mm, tasty. Break up the noodles a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put in my sauce ingredients. A little fish sauce. Just a few drops. A little soy sauce. Just a few drops. Little sugar. That wasn't enough. There we go. Where did my ramen packet go? There it is. 
and then maybe half of this. Okay. Lemon juice. Oops, don't want that seed to fall in. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to let it go for not very long, just maybe two minutes before my next step. We're going to put an egg in this guy. Okay, so I take my egg, get it all nice and good and cracked. Can you see? Can you see? I reduced the word can to can. Can. That's because in this sentence, it's a helping verb. See is the main verb. Helping verbs will usually be unstressed. And can likes to reduce when it's unstressed to can. K sound, schwa, n. Can. Can. Can you see? Listen again. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? In there. Then just split it open, dump it right in, put on the lid, turn off the heat, boom! So now I'm going to dump the ramen into my bowl and I have this little spoon because I'm going to hold up the egg so that the egg doesn't get crushed in the process. So I dump it all. And I'll put the egg in. And now if I want a runny yolk, I just leave it as it is. If I want the yolk to be more cooked, then what I'll do is I'll pick up some noodles and sort of cover it. And that will cook it. So that maybe when I'm halfway through or towards the end of my bowl of ramen, I have a delicious yolk that's mostly cooked. Mmm. I love it. Okay, last thing, gonna garnish with a little cilantro. Not a must, just because I had it. And there you go, mom, auntie, a bowl of ramen. As a thanks for being my camera lady, I'm gonna let my friend Sarah eat this delicious bowl of ramen. What do you think, Sarah? It's delicious. I know I'm no master chef. And probably a lot of my students can make a much better noodle dish than I can. I'm obsessed with noodles right now, so please send me your recipes. Post a photo to my Facebook page. Or maybe even post a video of you making your noodle dish. I can't wait to get some recipes. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.